Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Lisa Foster with lisascreativecards.com. It's been a while since I've made a video, so please bear with me while I work all of this out. So today we're going to be taking a look at the pop-up shadow box card. Now you may know it by a different name, but essentially it is a five by seven card that folds flat for mailing. And then when you open it up, you get this fantastic dimension. The original card concept comes from Jennifer McGuire, so thank you, Jennifer. And before we go on, I want to congratulate my friend, France Martin. She's a beautiful lady and an amazing team leader. She recently hit over a million dollars in career to date sales, so she was able to design her own stamp set. So we'll be using this beautiful stamp set in our project today. Okay, let's get started. So this is our card, this is the front of it. And as you can see, when you open it, it pops up into this cool display. So it has lots of dimension and everything and really would be a great card for just about anybody for just about any reason. So it stands on its own on the desk and it fits into this uh, five by seven or A7 envelope. Stampin' Up! doesn't carry these, but I will link to the ones that I use, but really it's an invitation envelope. All right, so here's the two stamp sets we're using, uh, A Perfect Storm that France designed, and we're going to be using Sailing Home as well, along with the coordinating dies for that set. All right, so we have a seven inch by 10 inch piece of white cardstock here, and we're going to score that at one and a half, and again at five inches. So this will be our card base. Next, I'm gonna bring in two pieces of white cardstock measuring one inch by four and a half inches. And we're just gonna score half an inch from each end. So score it at half an inch, flip it around, and then score at half inch again. All right, these are gonna be the pillars for our stage, if you will. So half inch, and then flip it, and half inch again. All right, so now I have two pieces uh, measuring one inch by three inches, and we're going to score this at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter inches. So again, that's three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter inches. Okay, so here I've got my Stamper at a stamp positioning tool. I have a piece of grid paper here just to protect the bottom surface. You don't need the foam pad for this because it's a cling stamp set. So I'm bringing in my card base and here I'm trying to show you where the score lines actually are. I don't want to fold and burnish this yet because it's a lot easier to stamp with it flat. Alright, so this is the front side of the card and we're going to start by stamping the inside of the card. So I'm just going to place this down in my Stamparatus, um, having it out, oh, about an inch, so I have room for my stamp. This is a piece of masking paper. I like masking paper, but you can use masking tape, post-it notes, whatever you have that you're used to. And I'm just sticking this in here. I'm going to bring in my Sunrays stamp set and position it kind of in the middle. Now I'm gonna be stamping the sun rays around, the, around this one. So I'm going to ink up my stamp set by using a sponge dauber. I've put a clear block there just to sort of stabilize the door. And this is Daffodil Delight uh, ink. And I have my Daffodil Delight sponge dauber. So I'm just gonna apply it really heavy at the top and then sort of bring it down a little bit as I go. And this sort of fades it out. So you have more of a, like a gradient. And it looks really cool when you do this. So you can add colors or whatever you'd like. And I'm just sticking with the yellow for now. So I'm stamping that down. And I'm going to come in and wipe off my stamp. 
so that I don't get ink where I don't want it, <laughs> which I'm notorious for. And then I'm going to reposition this for where I want it, close the door and repeat this process. All right, so now I have um, my, my sun rays all stamped and ready to go. And I'm gonna add in a couple of little clouds. So I decided that I want my clouds to be pretty soft and not have big edges, I guess is the best way I can describe it. So I'm doing a second generation stamping process here. So um, I'm inking up the cloud with balmy blue using a scrap piece of paper to stamp off once and then stamping it right onto my card. And we're gonna wipe that off again, reposition the cloud, get it just where I want it, close the door on the stamparatus and ink it up again with balmy blue. Whoops, I almost forgot, see? Stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper and stamp it onto the project. All right, so I've gone ahead and added the seagulls and everything, and so now I'm gonna do a little blending. Um, I just wanna add some color and dimension to the card, but I don't wanna add a lot of layers. So um, sponging or uh, blending on color really helps uh, create that dimension and interest without adding bulk to the card. So I've uh, sponged on or brushed on, I have to get used to saying that, um, the sky area. And now I'm coming in with the crumb cake color and I'm going to blend that onto my card sort of all the way down just so that when you look at the image, or the, the dimension, the sand sort of continues out, which kind of brings the card all together. So I'm really into blending these days. I'm practically addicted to it. So I have a lot of cool videos coming up to show you all the ways you can use these wonderful brushes. Okay, so here's what we have so far. And we need to flip it over so this is that one and a half inch section on the other side of the car, which is the front. And I'm placing my masking paper over that, on right on that score line. And I'm going to blend in some more uh, balmy blue ink, sort of to make it look like a sky. Because this is, when the card opens, it's going to be the sky for the top of the card, if that makes any sense. All right, I forgot to mention that when I was stamping this earlier, I also stamped for the front of the card. This is a six and a half by three inch piece of white card stock and I just pretty much repeated the same uh, image that I have on the inside of the card. So now it's time to fold and burnish. So you wanna make sure that we do this really well because this card has moving pieces. So if the folds aren't working good, then the card won't open and close good. All right, so here we have our two pillars that I was talking about earlier. These are gonna hold sort of the, the stage roof up. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here. This is the multi-purpose ad adhesive, which I can't live without either. So I'm just, excuse me, trying to get this right in the, in the in the uh, picture here, but I'm adding a little bit of glue and coming out to the end edges there. And I'm going to place this right in the co very corner of that. So you can see that I'm kind of wiggling it around. That's the beauty of glue, liquid glue. So I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side, keeping my glue right within that area between the end and the scored line. And I'm just gonna wiggle this into position here. And I fuss around with it for a couple of minutes here. And then I'm gonna make sure that <laughs> that's the perfection coming out of me. And then we're gonna close it and let it dry. Okay, so now 
I've got our dried card here and I'm going to be adding glue to the bottom areas of our pillars. So that's the, from that score line to the end. So I'm just applying a little bit of glue once I get the cat hair and everything out of the way. I'm able to, to um, apply the glue and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. We're not going to attach anything yet. And this part is really super easy. So we have the glue there and everything looks aligned and well. So we're just going to close the back of the card onto those strips, checking to make sure it's stuck where it was supposed to stick. And we're going to let this dry. I put something heavy on it. I just used my Samparatus because it was handy. All right, while that was drying, I cut a piece of one inch by seven inch balmy blue cardstock. This is gonna be for our lake. But before we put in our lake, we have to add our pop-up blocks. So that's what these little guys are here. So they fold and they sort of make like a square and we're gonna attach those to the back and that's what will create our three-dimensional seam when we add our lake in there. So I'm just applying glue on that first section there. And I probably shouldn't have done this, but I was trying to show you um, how to attach this. It's much easier to attach these with your card sitting right on your desk with it open. But anyway, I'm um, getting this into position. So it's going to go on the bottom right up next to the wall of there and then I'm adding some more glue and I'm going to attach it to the actual back the background there. And there we have it. So we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, again, it's a lot easier to do this with your card sitting flat on the desk, but I was just trying to show you um, how and where to attach those. All right, so here I have a piece of balmy blue that measures six and three quarters by three and three quarters, and then our white piece that was six and a half by three inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach all of this. Um, I did stamp a sentiment that measures three and three quarters by half inch, and I'm going to put a border of the balmy blue there, and you can see those measurements. All right. So everything's glued on and everything's dry on the inside. So we're going to go ahead and attach our, our little lake here. So I'm going to put glue right on the very edges here. I don't want it to go across because then it would stick to my back, my backdrop or the back part of the card. So we're just attaching that here and we're going to close the card to make sure that it everything adheres where it's supposed to and opens and closes without any problem. So you, you need to do this several times while you're making the card. It just ensures that everything's going as planned. So while that was drying, I went ahead and stamped and die cut a lighthouse and a sailboat. I also die cut um, these little hills using the basic borders die dies out of um, crumb cake. So I'm going to put one of them, I'm going to attach it to the blue piece, the lake, and I just put glue down at the bottom and now I'm attaching that right to that blue strip. Closing it again and now I can add my lighthouse. So I'm just going to put some glue down at the base of the lighthouse for the same reason as before. We don't want the glue sticking up above where we, um, we have attached it before. Okay. So now that we have that done, I can add our little sailboat. So I'm going to put the glue here on the front of the boat because I want it to look like it's sitting on the water. So I'm just attaching that there to the, to the back side of that blue strip and kind of holding it for a minute so that it has a chance to grab 
and there we have it. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and attach these other two sand hills. I guess that's what we can call them. And I'm just going to put some glue right on the very end there so that it adheres to our pillar and not, <laughs> not the rest of the card. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing then for the other side. I have a smaller one here. Applying glue to the very end and just sticking it right there. Okay, so I also die cut these um, plants from Garden Green and I'm just going to adhere those on top of the little sand hills that we just created. And there we have that. And now I'm coming in with a sentiment I stamped. Uh, again, don't worry, the measurements will all be on my blog. So head over there for the for all the information. All right. So now our card is is completed. Um, I did decide to add some gemstones on the front just for interest. So we have our beautiful card and it's ready to send. So I'm just going to fold it flat and place it in the envelope. Now you may want to check with your postmaster whether this needs extra postage or not. Um, every post office is different. I haven't had to include extra postage, but it's always safe to be sure and check. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video as messed up as it is. And I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Go out and spread love, happiness, and of course your creativity. See you next time. Bye-bye.